Hey everyone, so I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to put a new connector on a battery. I bought these batteries and they have this connector which I'm never going to use. I don't like this connector. I don't use it for anything. And I'm actually going to be changing it to JST. Now I have these connectors that are pre-wired. Uh, sometimes you buy batteries without connectors and you might want to add a connector to it. So I'm going to show you guys a real easy way. I find it to be the quickest way that I've ever done it. So the first thing we're going to do is take our new connector and shorten it up a little bit. Just because I don't want it to be that long. And then we're going to strip each of the wires so there's a little bit sticking out at the end of each one. Then we're going to go ahead to the battery and we're going to do just one of the wires. You don't want to cut both at once because if they touch then it's going to, uh, if these two wires touch when, when the metal's exposed it's going to short it out. So you only want to do one of these at a time so cut whichever one you want. I'll start with the black one here. and uh, then strip off some of the top of the black one. So what we have ended up with is just a this one just one side stripped and then the new plug both sides. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little bit of uh, heat shrink and we're going to take the heat shrink and just put it on should have put it on the other side, it's got a smaller. Just put it on there and just uh, slide it as far in as you can. And then we're going to take the two parts that we want to put together, both black sides, and we're going to slide them together so they kind of get interlaced. And they'll get all interlaced in each other. And then squeeze it together so it kind of isn't doesn't have sticking out fibers. Most people will tell you that you want to tin the wires first and then stick them together and so on. I find this to be the fastest way and you'll see why. You don't even need any special tools or anything. Now put this down on a pan with some aluminum foil on it and all you gotta do try to bend up this wire away a little bit. All you gotta do now is take your soldering iron and hold it down on here for a couple seconds. You want to heat up these wires a lot because you want the solder to to uh, drain down into them, kind of soak down into them. So hold it on there for a second, and now we can put in some solder. And then we're going to flip it and just do it to the other side as well. I can see the solder came through, but we'll put a little bit more on this side. And then we have a fully stuck together joint. Oh, my heat shrink. Be careful, I got my wire a little hot. It looks like my heat shrink is uh, shrinking on my wire up here. So uh, I'm going to have to wrap that with something else other than heat shrink now. Let's go ahead and do the second side. Actually, I've got to wrap this really quick because I can't let that touch. So um, let me grab some tape. get this fixed up better later, but for now I'm going to use some tape on it so they, I can finish the other side. Alright, so now we got just some tape on there because the heat shrink shrunk. Now we'll do the red side. Same thing. Get them out. Push them together so they're interlaced. Kind of, oops. Got to put on heat shrink. Hopefully, this time we don't burn it up. Right, so, again, we push them together, squeeze them together, and then we take our soldering iron. This heat shrink is not going to last. Okay. Try to do this one more careful so I don't get the heat shrink.
Okay. So then you would just push the heat shield back down. And it's going to shake a little bit because it's still hot, but go back over it with your soldering iron. And there it is. So that took four minutes for me to demonstrate it and do it. Pretty easy and works perfect. So that's how I do it. So, see you guys later.